In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a robot to edit for you. No, I'm not. I'm actually not going to show you how to do that. Maybe one day. But I am going to share with you five tips to speed up your editing workflow so that you can save time because who's got time for editing? Nobody's got time for that. Without further ado, let's jump right into this video. Here we go. You got to just press record. Quick warning for you guys out there. I am going to be using Final Cut Pro 10 in this video, but these tips are going to work with any editing software. So you definitely want to stay tuned. But if you're using Final Cut Pro 10, then you are superior than everyone else. I'm sorry, Omar. All right, let's get into it. Tip number one is to use proxies. Nolan, what is a proxy? Good question. A proxy is a lower quality version of your actual video. So you can edit with this lower quality version. Your computer runs a whole lot faster. You're not going to run into drop frame rates or loading times, anything like that, because it's it's lower quality. And then at the very end of editing, you switch out the lower quality with your good quality and it does all the magic and it replaces all those files. And then when you export it, it looks beautiful. It looks high quality and it's gorgeous. And you save time because you're editing with the lower quality stuff, making your computer run faster. This is how you do it inside of Final Cut Pro 10. You can see right here, I have my library set up. I got my event and project ready to go. I'm solid. All I need to do is import some footage. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna hit import media. And at this point, let me go to the correct folder. Right here in my hide likes and comments folder is an upcoming video I'm gonna edit for Think Media. To the right, you are going to see this transcode section. This is where you can actually create the proxies and I'll show you how this uh, is stored and all that kind of good stuff. But there are basically two different things you need to know here. You got optimized media and you have proxy media. Optimized media basically says that it's gonna take your Sony or Canon files, whatever you're shooting with, it's gonna turn it into a ProRes file and that is going to run smoother inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now, a lot of you guys probably already had that turned on, but your files are still running slow because it's 4K and you know your computer probably is not that good. Well, proxy is going to be better for you if your computer is older or if your videos are running slow in your editing software. Now, under our proxy media, we have ProRes proxy and we have H.264. Honestly, you could use either of these. I've tried both of them out and they both run great on my computer, but I like to use ProRes proxies because Final Cut Pro likes to use ProRes because it's Apple and anyways, doesn't matter, but I like to use ProRes proxy and here you can choose a frame size. Now I shoot all my stuff in 4K. 50% is gonna turn that in to 1080 HD and it actually doesn't even look too bad. I mean, of course it is lower quality, but it honestly, really doesn't look that bad. I definitely recommend trying that out and seeing how your computer runs. Now, if it's still running a little bit slow, you can set it to a lower resolution, like 25% or 12.5%. 25% for me, I've used it before and it definitely works great. 50% works for me too, but 25% it is a lower quality and it's just going to give you faster files to work with when editing. Down here, you could also set it to, you know, 1080 HD, which is the same as 50%, but you have those options down here for me. I'm just going to leave mine at 50%. You don't need to have optimized media selected because we are going to be using proxies the whole time. So from here, all you have to do is hit import selected. And because I have the folder selected, that is going to make proxy files for everything in the folder. Nice and easy. I'm going to hit import selected. Boom. So we are importing and you're going to see something right up here. If you click on this circle, you are going to get this window and this is going to tell you what is happening. And it tells you that it's transcoding and analysis. Remember, we are transcoding some of our footage right now. So if I bring this down, you can see there's three clips that it is turning into proxy files. So we're going to give this a few minutes. We're going to take a sip of water and uh, come back to it when it's ready to go. Am I the only one who uses a gigantic water bottle? 99. 100. Okay, sweet. So we're all done and we can exit out of this. Our proxy files are now made. Before I show you how to actually use these in Final Cut Pro 10, let me show you where they are stored. So inside the folder where I actually uploaded all that footage, it was two video files and one audio file. We have an optimized media and proxy media. Now this kind of confuses me because I didn't select optimized media, uh, but in here we have the, it looks like it is the audio, but for some reason it's a .mov but it's the audio file. Anyway, so there's that. But then in our proxy, which is what we're gonna be using, we have our video files. I couldn't get that word out. 
So right here, if I open this up, we can see that it doesn't even look that bad, honestly, but this is our proxy file. And then we have our screen share and you can see this definitely does look a bit lower quality than what it actually was. Okay, this is how you use them now in Final Cut Pro 10 for people wondering where they're stored. That is exactly where they're stored. Nice and easy. Okay, moving on. So let's go ahead and just throw my entire video down into this timeline so I can show you guys how to use this. So we got our video right here. And basically all you need to do is go to this upper right hand corner where it says view and change this from optimized original to proxy. Now proxy only or proxy preferred. Here's the difference. Proxy only will only show you proxies. So if you have something in there that was not proxied, if I add in a new video that maybe I didn't make into a proxy file, it's not going to show. That's why I like to use proxy preferred because then it can mix in the two and it's using proxies if it has it. So I'm just going to select proxy preferred. And now this video in my timeline is the proxy. Now before going out to actually share and export the video, you want to make sure you change this back to optimized original. It's okay if you forget because uh, Final Cut Pro will actually let you know. It'll say, hey, do you want to export your proxies? And you're going to say no. And then you're going to go back, you're going to change it, and then re-export it. So don't worry about that, but that's how you do it. And that is going to speed up your workflow a ton, especially if you have an older laptop, an older computer, definitely start using proxies. I hate the, the spinning wheel of death, the drop frames, all that stuff, it slows you down. We're trying to save time. Number two, I'm gonna call speedy rough cut. Okay, we are going to speed through and fly through this uh, 11 minute and 24 second clip and trim it down by this little editing workflow thing that I do. Let me show you. So I filmed the video in one long clip and I need to trim it down into all the good parts. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do this for every single video and I swear it saves me so much time. Now, if you are going through and you're starting at the beginning and you're just hitting play and you're watching this, like this is boring, you don't want to watch this, we can skip through all of this and save a bunch of time. The main thing that you wanna look for here is the audio waveforms. We are gonna be editing while looking at the audio waveforms and that is these little waveforms down here. We are gonna be using these. Right here you can see there are no waveforms, which means it's silent, which means I'm not talking and therefore we can go ahead and just cut that out to start with, okay? So that's that, that's kinda the idea, but we're gonna get deep and I'm gonna show you how you can really start to save time by using these waveforms. Now, because I shot this video, I already know that this beginning part really is nothing because I kind of mess with the background and then I come back over and I start right around this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just chop all this off and I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. So officially right here is when I start uh, the video and I start trying to talk to it. Now, instead of hitting play and listening to my entire take, what I do is I hit play, I listen to the first like three, four, five words, and then I move to the next audio waveform, and then I move to the next one and the next one. Because what happens when I shoot videos like this is I often mess up and then I'll redo what I was trying to say. And when I move on to my next sentence, I know that my last take was my best take. And so that's how I get my rough cut. Let me actually just show you exactly how I do this. Now in order to disable, now in order to turn off now in order to turn off your, now in order to hide your, now in order to hide your, hide your dislikes and your likes, in order to hide your dislikes and your like, what I like to do. Okay, I moved on because what I was saying is in order to disable, in order to turn off, whatever, right? Right here, it was uh, the last time that I said that. When I jumped forward to this next waveform, I was talking about something different. So I know for sure that this is at least probably my last take. I know that this was the same thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of that. And now I'm going to listen to this again. It looks like there might be some pauses right in this area, maybe in this area. I can't tell if I just talked slower there or if that's an actual pause, but I'm gonna go ahead and listen to that right now. Now, in order to hide your dislike videos, first thing you want, you want to make sure once you have done studio. Okay, so I know that's all good because I kept talking, I never stopped, and so I'm going to go ahead and hit B on my keyboard and select right there because I know that's the end of the clip, and I'm going to do the same thing again. So you can see here that I'm really trying to figure out what I want to say. This is probably the hook in the video, and so I'm going to fast forward because look, all of this is just nothing. I'm kind of probably writing something out. I'm thinking about what I'm going to say. I'm going to do it again right here. All right, here we go. Shake. Now I'm going to shake. Now I'm going to shake. All right now, I'm gonna show you how to do this on a video. You can also do this. 
All right, so this right here, this is it. I am going to delete all of this and keep going. I'm gonna show you how to do this when you are up with this. That way you never, every time, you can just do, let's say you wanna, and you can also, and you can all, you can also do this on multiple, and if you wanted to do this on all your videos, you can also do this on multiple videos. So, so I'm actually saying the same thing here. So I know that I redid it. I just changed the wording a little bit. And also here's another thing. I can see that I talked for a long time right here, which makes me think that this is probably my best take. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I already know that I redid it. And uh, But let me hear because I might have redone it. I don't remember. But that's why you just listen to the first little bit. You don't have to listen to all of it. You can do that in the next step. So that's basically how I go through the first cut on every single Think Media video. I look at the way forms I listen to the first couple words and then I figure out which was my last take which was my best take and I move on from there so now that I have a rough cut in order to just go ahead and watch it through maybe I want to cut some pieces out instead of playing it back at a hundred percent and just watching it at a hundred percent what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the space bar and then I'm going to hit the letter L now this is gonna work on any editing software and this is going to speed up your playback so that you can listen and watch it at a faster time than a hundred percent which is awesome because you don't need to watch the whole thing back at 100%, especially when it's just a rough cut and you're editing it uh, to trim down the fat and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna hit the space button, then I'm gonna hit L to speed it up. Now in order to hide your dislikes and your likes on YouTube as well as turn off the comments and no one can comment on your videos, first thing you wanna do is log into your YouTube account. You wanna make sure you're doing this all this Now I use this all the time. Sometimes I have 20 minute long tutorials on here that I'm watching back and just by hitting that L button to watch it back, I'm saving myself like five minutes, okay? Every time I watch it all the way through. And that really adds up over time as you are editing your project inside your editing software. Tip number four is to copy and paste attributes. Most of us know that you can hit Command C and then Command V to to copy and paste a clip to another clip. But what happens is that this pastes everything onto the next clip. That includes any audio effects, any cropping, any sort of LUTs that you put on. It's going to paste everything. Well, in order just to copy and paste a few things that you want to move on, whether it's just some audio effects or maybe a color grade or maybe a crop, you can do that. All you need to do is select your clip. We are gonna hit Command C. And there are a few things different uh, on this clip than the rest of the clips, but let's say I want to paste that, the color grade only. I don't want to paste the crop. You can see I have a crop here, crops back out. I just want to paste the color grade. What you want to do is hit shift command V and this is going to pull up your paste attributes. Now this is really cool because you can select and deselect things that you do not want to paste over. So like I said, I do not want my crops. So I'm going to go ahead and just unselect that. And I changed the volume. I do not want to adjust the volume on this next clip. And now all I'm pasting over is this custom let. So I'll hit paste and you can see it has not affected the audio. It has not affected the crop. It's just sent over over my LUT. I use this all the time, especially for audio, because usually I have a grade done and then I'll do my audio editing last and I copy just the audio, maybe the volume and some EQ and stuff like that. I'll copy it and paste it to all the clips and it's not gonna affect any of my crop ins, crop outs, or handheld shakes or anything that I do like that. It's only going to paste over my audio effects. Same with LUTs and different effects like that. If you are adding on effects, whether it be a crop or a LUT, onto every single clip that you want, that's gonna be a waste of time. Select all of them and just do paste attributes, select what you want it to be. It saved me a whole lot of time, so now you know. Tip number five is to create presets. This saves you so much time because instead of EQing the same mic over and over again, you can actually create, say, an EQ like this for this USB mic, and then I can use that every single time I use this mic. It's a preset, it's built out, I can click one button and it's gonna do the rest for me. This works with video effects, this works with color grading, you can actually save a LUT maybe with some tweaks that you've made to it and then save this as a preset. That way when you add in the LUT, it's also gonna add in those little tweaks that you've made to kind of make it your own and fit your camera best. Here's how you do it. First, let's start with an audio preset. So you can see here that I've made some adjustments to the EQ on this microphone. I can exit out of this. You can see that is the only thing I've done here. Let's say I want the DB to be zero. Okay, perfect. Now to save this as a preset, all you have to do is go down here, hit save effect 
effects preset. From here, you can select what you want to save. So I'm just gonna call this Samson Q2U because that is the microphone that I am using. You're also gonna see other options if you add in some sort of like reverb or noise reduction, you're gonna have those options here. You can select them. But for me, all I've done is some EQ and volume, which is fine. And I and you definitely wanna make sure that stretch to fit is selected. That way it takes whatever clip and it stretches it out to the full thing so that your effect is saved to your entire clip. From here, all you gotta do is hit save. Now what you can do is go over to your effects. You can scroll down to audio and you can see that you have custom. And here are some of my custom ones. So I'm gonna use the Samson Q2U that I just made. And I'm gonna drag it over this clip right here. Now you can see that it has added in my EQ to be exactly like the other one. This is great if you use the same mic for your YouTube videos. You definitely wanna be saving presets because instead of EQing the same mic in the same room every time, you don't need to do that. Just create a preset and drag and drop and you're gonna be set to go. You can do the same thing with video. So you can see I have a LUT here and then I have some color wheels where I just changed some like contrast, stuff like that. But if I want to save this as a preset, both of these together, I can go to save effects preset. Now here I do want my custom LUT, my color wheels, but I do not want my crop and stretch to fit is fine. I can go ahead and rename this to the A7S3, which is the camera that I'm using for this shot. Now something here, and this is the same with audio but the audio one was correct here it's set to the category 360 I actually don't want to save it to 360 I'll save it to a new category and we can call it custom you can really call it whatever you want but I'll just go ahead and call it custom as well you'll hit create and from there it's going to save to a brand new category called custom so now over here in the effects if we go to custom you are going to see my a7s3 preset we can scroll over something that has no color on it and boom drag and drop and you're good to go. Click or tap on the screen for editing tips for making better YouTube videos. I will see you guys in the next video.